Have you ever had a relationship, it didn't work out, but you just didn't understand why. It was like you just fought all the time. Or maybe your marriage is starting to go south or has been south for a while. You just don't know why that is. What triggered it to get on this path and how do you turn it all around? My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and today's video is the top three reasons why relationships fail in entrepreneurship. Before we jump in, I'm going to encourage you guys to hit that like button, to subscribe and tap on that notification so that you can get notified when our three videos a week come out. Because if you're an entrepreneur, a high performing entrepreneur that wants to go to the next level in their mindset, their marriage, their, their business, this is a channel for you. So let's jump in because today's content is it's so powerful. And I coach a lot of entrepreneurs around relationships or marriage and why did it go south? And so the first one is what we call non-acceptance. And what I mean by that is we don't really accept our partner for who they truly are. We have this vision of who we want them to be. And most of the time we want them to be like us, right? Because we like people that are exactly like us, but that's kind of weird wanting to date the same person as us. In fact, with masculine and feminine energy, we all heard, Opposites attract, right? So in the beginning of the relationship, you're attracted to this person because they're the opposite of you. They make you feel alive. It's, you know, it's there's this polarity there, right? But we all have that honeymoon phase and it wears off. And what happens? <clears throat> at that point, we start nitpicking at our partner to try and make them like us, to have our same rules, our same beliefs, right? Our same hobbies or interests or mindset or whatever. And as an entrepreneur, especially if you're a high performing entrepreneur, you're always looking to grow. That's why most of you are, you're in coaching, you have mentorship, you're in a mastermind. It's because you're constantly looking to elevate yourself to that next level. And somewhere along the line, you might've gotten into a relationship with someone who is, they're attractive, they're great, but they're not growing at the same speed as you. They don't really have that same work ethic as you. And you try to change them to kind of be more like you. And what happens is you're usually confronted by resistance. Maybe you've heard things like, that's just not who I am, or that's not how I am. It's not what I wanna be or what I wanna do. And all of a sudden it can be frustrating because you wanna go to this next level and maybe they're not going at the same speed or have no desire to do that. Instead, you should focus on what they're not versus who they are and what you love about them. So. In order to change this non-acceptance, it's starting to work on what do you love about this person, right? Like how, how, what do you appreciate? Why did you fall in love or why did you get married to this person in the first place? What was it about them and or what can you appreciate about them right now? How is them not becoming like you a benefit? What, is, what are you able to learn from them? What is that reflection that they're creating for yourself? Some really good questions for you to be able to dive into if you find yourself in this position. <clears throat> There's this great quote by Eckhart Tolle. He says, the greatest catalyst for change in a relationship is complete acceptance of your partner as he or she is without needing to judge or change them in any way. <clears throat> I will tell you, when you release that judgment and that, um, that energy to change someone, what will happen is they'll start to feel your love, your acceptance, and by default, they will naturally want to come with you more than if you try to fight them on it and resist it and judge them on it and call them out on it. Doesn't mean it's a guaranteed way for them to be the way you want them to be, but what it is, it increases the probability because there won't be so much resistance. Your partner won't be pulling out their sword to you. And when they pull out the sword, usually typically what happens is the other person pulls out their sword and then it's World War III, right? And so this non-acceptance is one of the biggest factors when it comes to why relationships fail. <clears throat> All right, number two is lack of trust. This is a huge one, especially in the entrepreneur world. I coach a lot of people in the internet marketing space, the coaching space, and what happens is in this space, a lot of people, they're high performers, right? So they got a lot going on. Most of them usually have this high confidence in, about, in themselves or their ability, and they go networking a lot and creating partnerships at JVs. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunities with these events where, you know, a lot of times they're drinking, 
and flirting can go on or miscommunication around you know what someone said or why they exchange information can happen and it's like <clears throat> you don't trust your partner or your 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 wife or husband in these situations and with this lack of trust causes jealousy gets someone triggered and then all of a sudden World War III breaks out and then they end up going their own separate ways. I can't tell you how many times I did not trust my partner and guess what? That lack of trust led to them cheating or led to us breaking up. And so I had to work on me and trusting my partner regardless of this situation. And I love this quote by Ernest Hemingway. It says, the best way to find out is if you could trust somebody is to trust them. Because if they're gonna cheat, they're gonna cheat. If they're going to be faithful, they're gonna be faithful. They're gonna be loyal, they'll be loyal, right? <clears throat> Doesn't mean that you can't address the situation in a loving manner, but the only reason why you don't trust is there's something going on inside of you that's reflecting out on your partner. Because if you really, if you trusted yourself in every and any situation, you wouldn't see a lack of trust in others unless there was, you know, blatant, I mean, absolute blatant foul play, like they're flirting and, you know, like it's beyond obvious, right? And if there is that moment, you got to ask yourself, how confident are you? How confident are you in your relationship or marriage? How much are you giving and pouring into your relationship, into your wife or your husband or your boyfriend and your girlfriend? Because I've never seen someone, a relationship at least, that their partner met all their needs, filled their cup and overflowed. And the partner's like, well, let me explore over here and see if it's better. Never saw it, right? It's like, if you hit the lottery, would you continue to play the lottery? No, there's no reason, right? So if there's a reason why you think you can't trust someone, you gotta ask yourself, what am I doing to fill my partner's cups and needs every day above and beyond? Because remember, a relationship is a place to give, not to receive. Now we do wanna receive, but our intention is, how can I give? How can I pour into my partner? How can I love them even more? Right? That's a question my wife and I often ask is, how can I love you even more? And so if you have kids, it even becomes, <laughs> that becomes a more difficult question, but it is achievable. So, all right, <clears throat> work on you, work on your trust and allow the other person to either live in that space of trust or if that's not who they are, then you aren't meant for them and they're not meant for you. It's not fun to go through a, a breakup or a heartache or you know a divorce or getting cheated on. I've been through all of them except a divorce. I'll never ever go through a divorce. I'm speaking it now in Jesus name. Um, but look, you gotta be you gotta be real. It doesn't feel good. But what's the other alternative? Be jealous to fight all the time? Do you think that's really accelerating, catapulting the relationship forward? Is that a key instrument in navigating your relationship to a higher level? I don't think so. All right, <clears throat> let's jump into number three. And number three is poor communication. Poor communication is huge. William Paisley said, communication is the fuel that keeps the fire of your relationship burning. Without it, your relationship goes cold. Look, I remember when I was young, I used to just be like, you know, who's the hottest person that I can hook up with, right? And what's cool is like, yeah, and I always joke around with clients around this, yeah, that's cool, you might find this hot guy or hot girl, you might sleep together for an hour each day, but what do you do the other 23 hours, right? If you can't have that stimulating conversation, that deeper connection, that purpose, that drive, that, that ability to just connect, if you don't have that, like what is there? It's only sex then. Right? It's like your relationships will fail if you can't communicate effectively. And so working on that skill set is so important. I can't tell you how many relationships I blew because I didn't have good communication. I couldn't express myself, my desires, <clears throat> Especially back then when I was younger, you know, in my early 20s, I didn't have the knowledge I have now. But I, everyone knows communication is key, but no one teaches communication, at least not in a school environment, um, you know, when you're growing up, which would be awesome is how to communicate effectively in your relationships. But there's plenty of books and resources out there you can tap into. 
But when you don't, if you can't communicate effectively what you want, then your partner, look, I always say this, the quality in your communication is in direct proportion to what the person that's receiving the message gets. And so what I mean by that is if you say one thing, like if you say X, Y, Z and they hear ABC, it's ABC. It's not X, Y, Z. So you got to work on becoming a real good communicator and expressing. The biggest thing I found, as, you know, with entrepreneurs when they're dating or maybe when they first get married is this frustration around intimacy, right? Like sex, right? Like in the beginning, it's like you're like cats and dogs and you're just going at it. But then after time, honeymoon wears off, you're working in your business, you're growing, you're creating your empire. It's easy <clears throat> for, oh, I'm just too tired tonight. And that day or two turns into a week and that week turns into a couple weeks or a month or a month or two. And all of a sudden it's like, my needs aren't being filled. And so if you can't communicate that effectively without making the other person feel inadequate or like they're doing something wrong or, you know, you're just not desirable, if you can't communicate that, well, then all of a sudden that turns, you know, your cup is not getting filled. And then it's like, oh, well, maybe I can't trust this person. And then, you know what, if they're, this is how they are, I can't be with this person and non acceptance. And it's just like, oh, things stack. And it's just like, no wonder relationships can go so south quickly. And so the best thing you can do is work on your communication to have a safe place where you can communicate your needs, your desires, your, your wants to your partner. If there's not a sacred place for you guys to communicate, I encourage you to create one where you guys, there's no rules, there's no judgment, there's no backlash. It's a sacred space where you can be able to speak freely and then it's about finding a solution to it and taking responsibility. Okay, we haven't been intimate in you know a couple of weeks. That's my fault. What do I need to do for you? What do I need to do to step up? Do I need to initiate things? Do I need to connect? Do I need to um, do I need to hear you out more? Do I need to be more present with you? What is it that I can do so that we can feel connected and have intimacy more frequently? Look, that's just one of many examples. You know, I'll give you a quick bonus one. Another one that makes relationships fail is money. And you might think as entrepreneurs, it's like, well, most of them make a lot of money. Not always. And even the ones that do make a lot of money, the other partner throws money down the drain buying foolish things. And then if you're one of those that have a psychology who has a scarcity mindset, but they make a lot of money, it's like, even if you make, you know, hundred grand, a million dollars a month, if you have that scarcity mindset, you'll still nitpick. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> your partner's like, look, I'm so tired of it. We got money. Why are you this and that? And then you start bickering, you get into in World War III right? And it's how many of those World War Threes do you need before you're just like, I'm done. But not all relation or not all businesses are like that. There's entrepreneurs who are, you know, they're making six figures a year. So that might be, they're only making a low five figures a month, but they, it takes employees, VAs, you got to invest in ads. You got all this stuff that you're doing or equipment or, you know, marketing, whatever that is. And so your partner might spend it and you might be so triggered because you're now feeding wants and desires instead of the golden goose that's going to make it from six to seven figures or seven to eight figures. And so that, that can, money's a big one. And if you guys can't communicate on your money situations and your expectations, I'm telling you, eventually World War III is going to happen and it's going to happen over and over and over again. And so you got to work on your communication. My wife and I, we have financial meetings all the time. <clears throat> We're always talking about where we are, our net worth, our monthly income, our bills, our expenses, our wants, our desires, trips. How do we navigate it all? And so we're always constantly communicating with it so that we're on the same page and there's nothing left in the world of the unspoken. So I told you about the top three reasons why relationships fail, non-acceptance, lack of trust, poor communication, and honestly, money issues. That's, that can be a, that's a big one for a lot of relationships. These aren't just for entrepreneurs. This happens for a lot of people, but I've just seen these top three happen a lot with all the high-performing entrepreneurs that I work with. And I wanted to address it today so that you can find different ways and put the spotlight on it so you can look in your relationships and say, hey, do all three of these fit? Do one or two of them fit? What do I need to do to make that change, to make that shift? So my question to you is, before we wrap up, is identify what, which one or which ones are showing up in your relationship or your marriage. And number two, what are you going to do to change it? 
Because as soon as you start asking yourself that question, it directs your focus to solution focus versus problem focus. And that is a game changer. So I encourage you to knock that out. Look, I know you guys found value in today's video. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, hit that little notification bell right next to it so you can get updated when these videos come out three times a week. And most importantly, I'd love to hear you comment. What is it that you took away? What are you going to be shifting your focus onto within your relationship or marriage? And I know it's not always easy to go public. I shared a couple of my stuff with you guys today, but I will tell you when you can make that public confession, it's so much easier to address it. Now it's like, okay, you, you made that declaration. Now it's time to shift it. So go ahead, comment below. I know it takes a little bit of courage to do that, but I got your back. I'd love to find out and comment. So with that, my name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.